안녕하세요, Kimi Kore, by Kimi Nida. Hi, this is Kimi Park from Kimi Kore, and today I want to do a little story time and tell you about my journey with learning the Korean language, with a little emphasis on taking classes. Between 2019 and now we are at the summer 2023, I have taken over 1,000 hours of classes in six different institutions across three different countries, and that's a lot. <laughs> So yeah, it's been almost five years I've been studying Korean and I thought maybe it'd be interesting for you guys to hear about the different places I've been. So a little bit of background on this. I did my first trip to Korea in 2016, during which I found my Korean family and met them for the first time. It's a bit of a long story, but my mom was adopted and I ended up finding her birth family. And yeah, I'll tell you about it in another video, but basically 2016 was the start of my Korean journey. After I came back from Korea, I thought, oh, I should uh, try to learn a little bit of Korean, but I didn't really know how to go on about it. So I started only for like two or three months a tandem so like a language exchange with a Korean guy at the time we would meet once a week in a cafe do one hour of Korean study and one hour of English study so starting with the tandem as your only source of learning is not really good at the time I was also extremely busy with work and I was preparing to go to grad school abroad so I was really really busy and I wanted to learn Korean out of a sense of duty a little bit and not really something I wanted to do it was something I felt I should do to be able to communicate with my Korean family. I was not very diligent. I did learn, you know, the alphabet and the very basics of grammar, such as like saying like a noun and then ieo or ieo, hwajangji odieo, like the most basic sentences, like the thing you would learn in the first two, maybe three chapters of any beginner's Korean book. But that took uh, me a few months and I forgot everything instantly as soon as I moved away and went to grad school. I started grad school a couple months later in December 2016 I went back to Korea with my mother to be able to see my family still no Korean was happening outside of greetings and a couple of words then we have to fast forward two years and we are in summer 2018 I am doing my third trip to Korea again with my mom to see my Korean family it was August it was really really hot outside you know my family was busy during the day so we would only see them in the evenings and I was thinking how nice it would be to learn Korean I was starting to be a little bit more interested in Korean you know things because because I was stuck at home a lot during that particular trip, I started watching K-dramas and I thought that was kind of nice. And when I started, my very first K-drama was, um, I can't remember the name right now. It was a story with a virgin ghost and a cook and I don't really remember it. But yeah, anyway, that's how I started K-drama. And I had just started listening to a little bit of BTS. You know, I was not so strongly into it just yet, but I was starting having a real interest for discovering more about Korea other than just our few trips that we had done here for the sole purpose of of seeing our family. We were doing no traveling, not an awful lot of exploring. It was really about family time. The idea grew and then by winter 2018 I decided that okay no I would like to focus on learning Korean and I would like eventually to move to Korea. For Christmas that year I got my very first Korean textbooks and it was the workbook level one of Talk To Me In Korean. I had just started listening to their podcast and I had registered for my very first Korean class which is the Sejong Institute in Berlin. So I started the level one in February 2019 and that's when I really started properly learning Korean and uh yeah, I never stopped. <laughs> So I did level one from February to May. At the same time, I had registered to second school in Berlin, which is the Koreanische Schule Berlin, which is a Korean school more for Korean kids. So they do weekend classes or afternoon classes, and they had a one course for adults wanting to learn Korean. There we were using the SNU book A1. The reason to take a second course was that the Sejong one was only once a week, and I thought um, that's not really enough to you know learn quickly. And so I thought even though I'm doing the same levels at least with two separate books the content is very similar I have to say but hearing it twice and explained by two different teachers it could be quite interesting so I did that in the summer I did my third course which was the Sejong level 2 and at the same time I was doing another course also at Sejong which was the Korean cultural course level 1 and this one was actually for a little bit more advanced students so I went in class and I did not understand much because everything was in Korean and not really targeted for somebody who had just passed level 1 but 
It's still a course that I did and attended. Then from September 2019, I did Sejong level three. And at the same time, I was doing the Sejong conversation level one. So this is an extra course, which is a little bit different, which is a little bit of a condensed version of level one and two, but focused more on practicing rather than just learning the grammar point and the vocabulary. Anyway, I have a whole video explaining the whole Sejong courses in details. So I'll put the link in the description below if you're interested. That autumn is also the time I went to Korea for the fourth time and I was really happy because it was the first time I was able to somewhat communicate a tiny little bit with my Korean family not very much but I had my first conversation with my harmony my Korean grandma which was kind of nice and it was just like very simple sentences like is your mom okay is your mom happy are you healthy and it was just like just yes it's okay like extremely short sentences but I remember she was lying down on her bed it was the first time it was just her and me together speaking without a phone without uh, my cousin helping us translating through English so yeah it was it was a very special moment for me and during that one trip as well I remember with the rest of my family we were just showing them photos and say some like oh uh, you know, like just saying very simple sentences, more, more communicating through words than anything. But uh, even though it was extremely basic, the very fact that I was able for the first time to do it was really nice. Then we move on to 2020. And it was the year I had planned on moving to Korea and do a year here in Korea as a working holiday. And my goal was to do a part-time job, experience, you know, Korean life, learn Korean and all of that, you know. However, and you guys know what I'm gonna say. Yes, COVID happened and I was not able to go. I mean, at the beginning it was still possible to go, but you know, we didn't have any visibility on what was going on. It was a little bit tricky. Eventually the French were not allowed to receive the working holiday visa anymore. And I was a bit worried about moving to the other side of the world with the pandemic, as well as with the fact that, you know, foreigners were treated differently. And maybe, I don't know, at some point they would tell everybody to leave or everything was really tricky. So I decided to wait that COVID would be over. In autumn 2019 I told my family oh yeah I'll see you in a couple months because I'm coming back like straight away in 2020 uh, but I would not see them until two years later. So in the meantime I continued to study. <laughs> so in 2020 I did Sejong level four in the first half of the year and then in the second half of the year I did level five. At the same time I took a little break from the other things in my life to do one intensive course at Yonsei University. So because of Covid everything was online including language courses so even if you were here in Korea you could not go on campus for the language courses and because everything was through Zoom I just decided to do it from Europe. Most of my classmates were in Korea or in China but I was the only European tuning in from Europe super early in the morning even though I was doing the afternoon classes because of the time difference and I did the intensive course level 3. So level 3 is low intermediate and again if you want to know more about the Yonsei program I will put the link to the video about it in the description below. Then we are already in 2021. In the first half of the year I did Sejong level six and at the same time because everything was online I was following the courses from the other Sejong Institute which is in Paris so all the other one I'm talking so far were in Berlin where I lived at the time and then I did on top of that the one in Paris. Paris Institute uses only the conversation books and in the sort of intermediate level they were using the conversation level two and it's now over at the same time I was doing the third course which was the Yonsei evening course. You know here in the university you have the normal intensive course where you do four hours a day and it's every weekday and you also have the evening courses which are only I think two hours or two hours and a half and it's three times a week. They use another book than a normal intensive courses so with the normal intensive courses at Yonsei they use new Yonsei Korean whereas in the evening course they use Yonsei Korean in three weeks and so I studied the level seven which roughly would correspond to the beginning of level four of a normal intensive course. Now the evening courses are also a little bit different in the sense that they are more targeted for people who are working at the same time and people are a little bit older in the class and pretty much everyone is Japanese. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I really really struggle in that class but I passed it. Yeah, anyway if you want to know more, again there is a video about it so you can go and check out the link. Then that summer of 2022 I did the Sejong Conversation Level 3 at the Sejong Institute of Berlin. In the second half of the year I did the level 7 of the normal Sejong curriculum and we arrived in 2022. First half of the year I did the Sejong Level 8. Then in the summer they had the Sejong Conversation Level 4 which I started but I did not finish because I was preparing to move to Korea. 
finally! <laughs> yes, I finally moved to Korea in August 2022 and yeah, my perspective on my year in Korea was a little bit different from uh, what I had first imagined doing in 2020 because I had two more years to study more Korean and put some more money aside. So I didn't really need to work in Korea anymore and my goal shifted a little bit to just traveling and doing some volunteering related to adoption, getting close to my family and I had just started a YouTube channel so I also wanted to create some content for that. Now, after a few months in Korea, I realized that I was not using Korean an awful lot except when I was spending some time with my family. So I decided in October to retake some courses. I first went with the free courses from the Global Center and I did the high intermediate course which uses the SNU books 4B and during one given course you only do half of that book. So 4B first part. <laughs> However, I had to stop a little bit before the end because I still thought that was not enough and decided to take some intensive courses at Sogang University, which is a uni that is particularly known for working on the speaking abilities, which is the thing that I was lacking the most. I had very little confidence in speaking, so I really needed to improve on that. So I registered for the Sogang intensive course level four, which I did from December 2022 to March 2023. And after that, I retook the free courses from the Global Center. This time I was in level 5A part one, which I also did not finish for other reasons. Again, if you want to know more about the Global Center, go check the link in the description for the video that is dedicated to this particular institution. And that was going until June. Right now, as I'm filming this, we're in July 2023. So this is the full circle. <laughs> of course, on the side of these courses, I also studied by myself. I did language exchange in groups, in one-to-one. -one. I used some apps, some books, some websites sites. If you're interested about all of those, again, I have videos about it. But yeah, the whole point is that the main thing that was driving me forward was doing these courses and each of them always have exams. So because thankfully I've never failed any course except the one I had to give up on. But that's a bit different because I literally did not finish the courses and did not pass the exam. The big question at the end of all of these courses, am I fluent? Am I? Um, yes or no. It depends. Really, it depends what you think of what fluent is. So personally, I'd like to consider myself fluent in Korean. I am technically a low advanced learner and I can have a full-on conversation for hours with a Korean who does not speak a word of English. I've done it before. Now, does the conversation flows perfectly? Not really. You know, it's a little bit like I speak in broken Korean and they try to understand me and I try to understand them and then tell them to repeat because I didn't get it. And uh, for some parts we have to get Papa go out, um, that kind of thing. But I can, in most situations, try to work around and communicate. So for me, as long as you are put in any given situation and you are able to communicate, even if everything has mistakes, as long as it's understandable and communication works, for me that's being fluent because it, you're also not using a specific dialogue that you learn by heart and that you have to just you know regurgitate you have to come up and improvise and speak or write or whatever it is so yeah <laughs> finally i'm fluent it took only almost five years. I know that some people can do it a lot faster than that, especially if you live in a country, especially if you do intensive courses for like a whole year. You can do from level one to level four within one year. So that would bring you to a fluent level. Level four is usually the minimum required level for uh, being a student here in Korea. So if you want to apply to a Korean, you need to do say a graduate program, which has courses in Korean. They would usually ask for a minimum of level four. I know some uh, degree asks for higher level like I think for medicine you need to be level six so you need to be like fluent fluent because medicine is more complicated I don't know anyway four is considered to be you find from now <laughs> kind of thing so yeah that's my journey so far <laughs> In the future, I would like to be better. <laughs> I would like to be a lot more confident when I speak Korean and stutter a lot less and not have Koreans looking at me like this really focused while they're trying to understand what I'm saying and me doing the same, <laughs> trying to understand what they're saying. <laughs> 
yeah, I would like it to be comfortable. I think that's the difference from, from being able to communicate to being comfortable while doing it. That's my goal. I just registered this week for passing the topic for the very first time. I'll be passing the topic in October of this year, in 2023, in Berlin. I am unfortunately <laughs> moving out of Korea next week, <laughs> but I have no intention on giving up on Korean and I will be back in Korea on a very regular basis. My other big goal is being able to read novels in Korean without massive issues. I also would like to feel confident in being able to help other learners learning Korean through, you know, giving tips about how to learn Korean, explaining how I did it and keep on improving and also making some fun content in which one can learn Korean. So I will learn as I'm preparing it for you and hopefully you guys would enjoy the content that I will create in the future teaching you some Korean. Yeah, so that's my journey so far and my plans for the future. That was quite long. <laughs> I'm guessing that if you are watching this, you either want to start learning Korean or you're already a Korean learner. In which case, <laughs> let's all keep on learning together and encouraging each other. If you'd like to encourage me, please give me a little thumbs up because it really helps uh, my channel. And thank you so much guys for watching. I'll see you in my next video.